Uh, what's up? This is Metal Nate. This is Brutal Brian. And we are here with Rao, Rory, and Chris from Enter Shikari. How are you guys doing today? Second night of your uh, of your tour, or second show, rather. Second show. Third yeah. night. Yeah. Uh, we, we're doing great. Is it uh, cool being back in the States for you guys? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's been great so far. I mean, we've uh, obviously we got a new record out, so we we're anxious coming to see like the reaction from people. But judging by the first show, uh, we're in for a very good tour. It's been it's been years since we actually had like a full headliner set in America as well. Um, where you know, obviously, when you play supports, it's great, but. You know, there's just like a pocket of people there that are fans, a pocket of people there that are fans, and you don't really get the full experience, the full atmosphere. You know, we play a headline, obviously everyone's into it, so um, we played a show the other day in Atlanta and it just went, just went crazy. And are so, they all, are they all at venues about the size? Because I know there's no barriers here, so it's good. Yeah. I, I think this is about, this is slightly, this is about, probably about average actually for the, for the, the average is about six, seven hundred, isn't it? Yeah. So, yeah. Today is actually a bit bigger, we're at 1,075, yeah. I think. Oh, is it? Oh. Is it already sold out? Or it's, sure no, there's still some tickets left on the door, but we're getting quite close, which is uh, pretty crazy. I wouldn't would be surprised you guys uh, most of the store. I mean, it's a good lineup. Oh, how did you choose this lineup? I mean, were you involved at all in the decisions? Yeah, yeah. Let Liv are really good friends of ours, so that was just a no-brainer. And they're really good lives. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. I'd say the two of you are pretty, I mean, as far as the live show goes, they bring the intensity. Yeah. yeah, definitely. It's one of those good things, you know, watching them before like, before we go on, we have to play really well every yeah. show, because if we don't, we know they will, and uh, they'll go home, uh, um, everyone's to, to yeah, have a stage, yeah, have stages. Have stages, so we've got to be on our game, you know. Yeah, they're, they're, quite, they're really inspirational, though, yeah. to watch this. And are you, are you DJing in between stops at all, or is that not happening in the story? <laughs> I know, I know, I was watching the DVD a few months ago and I saw, that was a while ago, that was a while ago. Do you mean like DJ sets like after parties and stuff like yeah. that? Yeah. Well, we're trying. Yeah. We, uh, we haven't got any organised at the moment, but I remember there's one in New York. York. One, one in Canada as well, yeah. the place we played last time we did a, uh, so maybe. Yeah. We're open to office. <laughs> maybe a house or yeah. a basement somewhere, you can sort out. <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be pretty fun. Yeah. You know, what, the unique once in a lifetime thing. Um, so the latest album, Flash Photo Color, um, it's more straightforward lyrically. It's very much, the message is, very, is a lot more straightforward than in past albums, I feel. Um, it seems to really sort of hit the nail on the head of the, the that uh, whole like, zeitgeist movement. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about like, what that means to you and what, what, how you feel about uh, zeitgeist movement and, and sure. how that work, like, works into music? Um, well, yeah, I think with this album, with just the power of like, simplicity just getting straight to the heart of the matter um, with the first album we kind of it was it was all very artistic and full of metaphors and the second album became a lot more frank and now we just had just had enough you know we just so we need to just say it how it is and that's what comes out so there's a lot of like bitterness and, and anger and frustration in the lyrics but there's also just so much hope and positivity and just and confidence really and that, that comes from things like the zeitgeist movement knowing what you know, as a as a species, what we can achieve, what's possible, um, and yeah, that's just one of the main things that kind of inspires us to keep us going. And sort of like transcending nationalistic like boundaries and views, and sort of just uniting as, as like one people to sort of conquer the yeah. problems that we're that like, that we're, that are facing us just as trying all to, humans. Trying, yeah, trying to give everyone a bit of perspective. Really, trying to. It's one of the hardest things to do is just to think like completely objectively, just to step out from your your normality and just look at society and look at you know how we live our lives and think about how we can do things better and uh, on the album it's a lot more melodic it's um, not maybe not as heavy was that like a risk at all to you guys or do you think do you think it's paid off I mean it's not it's not as screaming as past albums perhaps on the, on the whole uh, if you want to look at like well, uh, song by song some of them are heavy mm. I, I guess it's just like um, so sometimes with that screamy sound, um, or just always just screaming, it, it kind of it doesn't always sound quite as passionate as when you're like shouting to the point where your voice is breaking up and you're almost screaming. Like we think that kind of 
makes me sound more passionate and more mm. powerful as um, well, well audible, I guess. Is when when there is a, a lot of message in the in the lyrics, it's you know we want to, we want the lyrics to be heard. Uh, it's a, you know, yeah. it's a, that is a, another point of it. But, um, I think as well, like we just we listen to so much music nowadays. We we really want it to cover every sort of. Uh, the whole spectrum of what Shikari can do, like sound wise, and mm. so in this album, when to do that. So, I, I mean, I will say it definitely shows the vers- your versatility, and songs like Search Party and Pack of Thieves are just so up, like uplifting and fun, like just fun like to listen to. Um, nice, man. When you were finished to, and like finished with the album, recording it all mastered and everything, did, did you sit down and listen to it and just think, wow, this is like awesome? Yeah, for six months actually. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Because for all uh, Warped Tour, it's just like <laughs> well, we yeah we had it finished by Warped Tour. We mixed it on Warped Tour because um, there was a guy called Mike Fraser who was mixing it in Canada. Um, so he was emailing us tracks all throughout it and uh, stuff like that. So but, yeah, we did listen to it for quite a lot, um, for quite a long period of time, and uh, that was the most frustrating thing for us because it was done. We but wanted people to hear it, but we we went we went in England. We didn't want to release it when we went you know we went we were at home and. Uh, couldn't be there and stuff like that, so it was a it was a long wait. I, I reckon we had the excitement of a chicken. It's just laid an egg and it just has to sit on it. Yeah, just for ages, just keeping it warm, just waiting for the time <laughs> that it hatches. It was, it was a very frustrating time. Well, now that it's hatched and you've got the, this this chick that's yeah. grown this, this full this full feathered chicken. Um, <laughs> I mean, are you? You said you got a good reaction in, in Atlanta. Yeah, um, I, I'm assuming the reactions are similar in the UK as well. Yeah, yeah it's it's been. The reception to this album has probably been better than reception to any other albums. Mm. Yeah, just the the speed that people have you know come to t- uh, got to get grips with it, and you know we didn't expect people to be singing the lyrics back of this the day it was released, but you know they were. So. And uh, moving forward, then I know uh, this there's about like, a little more than two years in between this album and the last album. Um, it's a, it's not. It, it's a it's a full album in the sense that it leaves you satisfied at the end, but it definitely leaves the listener wanting more. Mm-hmm. How long do we have to wait for an EP or something to tide us over? Your guess is good. Yeah. Uh, the thing is with us is that we're lucky enough to be able to tour in lots of places. Basically, you know, to be reasonably popular in lots of different places. Um, so, I mean, in all honesty, there's just not enough lumps in the year. <laughs> so it takes us probably about 16 to 18 months to tour, to tour properly uh, for an album but saying that whenever we are at home any spare moments we get you know, we, we go in and we try and record a song here and there And so I'm sure there'll be one-offs to, to uh, tie people over yeah, we're, we're probably going to release a couple more songs as singles or like, yeah. or, or, which pretty much nowadays just means make a video for it <laughs> um, and, and after we've done that um, once people are getting bored of the album, we'll throw them a bone. <laughs> <laughs> so you're just going to hold on to those until absolutely necessary. And just, that's a good, that's well, a good well, strategy. Well, well, I mean, pretty much until you've got time, like Chris was saying, really. I mean, like, that's the great thing about like, the music industry today is, is that it doesn't have to be a plan. You know, we can do whatever you want. You can release a song by itself and it doesn't really have to tie in with anything. You can just do it. Um, so, yeah, when the time is right, when can get into a studio we will do fair enough and um how do you keep up with like do you keep up with Emily you must keep up with uh, global events like current events while you're on tour um and I guess I was wondering what are your what are your opinions of the situation right now in Syria and what do you think that kind of, like what's the responsibility of larger countries like the US and like the UK and the UK and what should we be doing mm. in that situation if anything it's a tough one because it depends how how deep you want to go if you want to speak about it within this system or if you want to like deconstruct the whole the whole thing because um, again like like you were saying earlier and like we're talking about the first the lyrics on the first few songs like borders you know artificial boundaries of countries um, and as soon as you have them you have the power structures and the hierarchies uh, and when you have that you're always going to have problems with really. um, we're kind of trying to endorse a, a powerless you know if, if there was real education you wouldn't need someone in charge like, how can one person be in charge of everything it, either this guy has to have the brain of a supercomputer or you know it's just the whole thing is just silly it's, it's a very primitive way 
of structuring a society and I think we will eventually grow out of it. But Do you think that will be within our lifetimes or far in the future? Who knows, who knows. Uh, I mean, obviously, everywhere you look, there's a crisis right now, you know. I think it's going to have to take some serious system meltdown. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I'm going to, I'm not just sure. You know. It's going to have to take some serious sort of like, you know, breakdown of a, of everything before, you know, you, you can rebuild it. You know, people say you, sometimes you've got to hit rock bottom before you bounce back up. Mm. And I don't, I don't know. I mean, I don't, yeah, I think it's going to have to take something horrible to happen. <laughs> so, okay. I guess on, um, just wrapping know. things up. I don't want to keep. I don't want to keep things grim or anything like that. And hopefully, <laughs> yeah. the situation. There well, I was going to say like that's why it's so important that like, you know, not not just us, not just us, that you know, everyone that sort of uh, knows how different things can be uh, has to spread the word. You know, just like you're saying about the Zygos movement. That's why it's so important. So before there's fucking World War Three or all the oil runs out or whatever it is that's going to happen, we, we have a have an idea of how to address it. And um, do you so? Do you have an optimistic view then? Do you think that? Because I mean, that guy's movement is pretty optimistic, mm. but it is also very much presenting the dire consequences. Like as they are going to be, like this is what's going to happen. We need to do this. Yeah, I mean, you, you have to be realistic, but I, I think it just is education, really. What, once people realise how different things could be, and uh, you know, these crises don't need to be happening. Um, I think people will just easily float towards. Mm. A new, a new structure. Okay, and um, on the topic of cheesing, is that still yeah. is that still a problem for you? On this oh, yeah. oh yeah, cheesing. Oh yeah, cheesing. We well, got the cheese board over there. Yeah, we got a lot of cheese. We've got board. a lot of right. already been munched quite a bit. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. a constant problem for us. <laughs> I noticed that it's, it's, it's a common theme in the, uh, the documentary on yeah. the yeah. there. <laughs> Um, you haven't got the own you, have you? I, I don't. I, I, don't. <laughs> my, bro- I got, my brother has it at home, actually. Yeah. We imported it. Uh, they haven't released it in the US yet. Uh, oh. I heard this was all burnt up during the riots or whatever. Oh, jeez. Um, oh, oh, yeah. Cheese. I was talking about cheese. No. That makes a lot more sense. <laughs> um, but I guess regarding the DVD, is that going to ever be released? <laughs> uh, oh, I don't know what the plan is over here. No. I, just, I know there's a lot of trouble copyrights and shit because we were signed to Interscope for that um, album so now we're we're rid of them thank god so should we just keep should fans just import it if they can oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah by all means. and um you got some summer festivals going on after this uh, and this tour is going to go into early May um what's going on for the fall anything big for you guys any big tours anywhere new for you awesome yeah that's awesome well, that's all this autumn oh. um, <laughs> Um, that's uh, yeah. it's still up in the air at the moment. It's yeah. towards the end of festival season, mm-hmm. isn't it? So we'll be touring somewhere. Yeah. September time, I think we're looking at Russia, um, possibly Australia. Though we'll be coming back over here. Um, it's in time for winter. Why would you want to come here in the winter? It's terrible. Um, we go everywhere. <laughs> yeah. You know, Sweden gets really cold as well. We always we manage to make a stop in Sweden when it's like minus fifteen. Well, I don't know what that translates to. But your temperature yeah cold cold <laughs> really cold <laughs> sounds pretty cold 14 degrees below freezing and um I guess any final thoughts to fans who for some reason have yet to pick up I don't know why they wouldn't have picked it up yet but have yet to pick up the new album um, pick it up <laughs> pick up the new album <laughs> right on well thank you guys very much I appreciate it <laughs>